The southern brush-tailed rock wallaby in Victoria is critically endangered. It's our rarest mammal, so there's only about 30 animals left in the wild. They were once widespread and, and common across parts of Victoria and now are, are only found in two tiny little populations. So one of about 25 to 30 animals in, in Gippsland, that's the last of our wild populations, and a second, a small, a tiny reintroduced population in the Grampians of four animals. Today at Mount Rothwell we're commencing a captive breeding program here for, for the rock wallaby. We are releasing 20 animals into a what we call an open range captive breeding site. So this is a new idea. The animals, if they can make their own breeding choices, will tend to make better choices than we can make for them, as which is what we typically do in zoos. And so here in Mount Rothall, in a 40 hectare area, which is free of foxes, we will release 20 animals and they will become the, the founder stock. What we hope in five years time will be about 100 animals. So Mount Rothwell is Victoria's largest exotic predator-free site. We are a thousand acres surrounded by an 11 kilometre feral proof fence. Inside we have three different vegetation types. So we have the critically endangered basalt plains. We have these beautiful granite outcrops where our rock wallabies will be released today. And that sort of recedes down into a, um, an open grassy woodland habitat. Um, within this environment, we get to introduce some really cool critically endangered species such as eastern barred bandicoots, eastern quolls, spot tail quolls um, and brush tail rock wallabies just to name a few. So we are privately owned and um, we collaborate with a number of specialised experts in this field and so we get a, a fair bit of advice on how to recover this landscape, how to reintroduce it, um, species as well as restore it back to how it was pre-European settlement. There are beautiful granite rocks and, and areas that we know are suitable for rock wallabies for, because about 10 years ago a, a closely related rock wallaby was released here and, and it's gone very, very well. So we, we're confident that our southern rock wallabies or Victorian rock wallabies will, will do well here and because it's got the right habitats, it's got the rocks, a good grazing and it's free of foxes. So what we need to do to um, secure rock wallabies is first increase their population size rapidly to, to, to prevent any further loss of genetic diversity. In fact, what we will do is introduce new genetic diversity through adding uh, closely related rock wallabies from, from New South Wales, so what's called a gene pool mixing program. Our overall plan is to increase rapidly the population size to about 200 animals. To achieve that, we need two sites. We've got Mount Rothwell, this site, and we need a second site. So, it's, so we are looking for a second site which has rock wallaby habitat that we can fence off, exclude foxes. And so once we've got those two sites, we're confident the rock wallabies will breed and increase fairly quickly. And within five to eight years, we'll have our 200 animals. So that's our priority for the next five years. We'll be in a position then to start reintroducing animals back into the wild in Victoria. And that's our long-term plan, of course, but we need to secure them first here in these insurance populations get the numbers that we need to secure their genetics conservation. So the early 2020s will be releasing back into the wild in Victoria. We have the rock wallabies awaiting. <laughs> so are we happy to see the first one go? Yep. Yep, okay. So here comes the first. There we go. Our first southern insurance population. Yeah. Good work, guys. <laughs>